joining again. Just waiting for the day. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, it, it's actually really nice. That it gives you a warning at least. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise it would have gotten cut off. But I did see yours yesterday, and uh, you guys did warning. like finish under an hour. It finished over an hour, according to like I have my laptop in front of me, so I can right. see the time. So it crossed okay. one hour. So then I started having like a mild like anxiety inside, <laughs> but I was like, right. because this happened before, but it's not warned me. It's closed, and then my entire chat, yeah. like the entire video, is just lost. So that's right. the worst. And I can't lose my yeah. conversation with Melody Fontana and Lindgren. I was like, that's not happening. So then ah, I was like, I'm listen. so sorry, <laughs> Melody. <laughs> end this. I don't want to talk to ah. you. But like I I I just I don't want to lose the like video. The yeah. Audio, so I had to yeah I had to edit. Yeah. But yeah, but it's so weird Instagram sometimes. Yeah. Just it does its own thing. Yeah, yeah. So, it's fine though. But yesterday, yesterday, mm-hmm. just watching Melanie, that was such a treat in itself. Because the way they they always feel like excited yeah. about what they do and they want to yeah. talk more about it. And I was just yes, please never stop talking. I want to hear about this forever. Please go on, Melanie. We like even later like we were like DMing and like she was also saying like I just want to keep talking because it's just it's yeah. just you talk about music and like it's a bunch of people we all like you me we all love music so if you right. just like connect people who love the same genre or work in the same industry or whatever this is what's gonna happen we're never gonna stop talking like it's just like I feel like with Lindgren and Melody like easily I could stay up all night talking to them you know. Like that's totally. I could like, see that. That was such a nice, yeah. smooth, flowing conversation. I loved seeing it. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, that was really good. Okay, I'll, I'm scheduling more right now. So yes, like, I'm so excited. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's jump right back into the fan mm-hmm. questions. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, this is from Jaya, who wants to know what kind of genre is popular in content writing, and secondly, as a content writer, what do you think is the most important? difficult question because i feel like uh, content writing is such a general term content writing it is, yeah. is yeah like anything under the sun so right. yeah so like i mean of course <laughs> you will have to decide what is your field like is it music mm-hmm. is it movies is it tv series is it like what is it is it youtube so like you will have to sort of categorize your con- like your interest in some particular content like you have to figure out what that is and within each bracket of content you have trends that like peak and then go down and peak and then go down so like right okay. now like uh, i mean over the past couple of years in music especially in india it's been hip hop like the edm yeah. trend died down in 2017 hip hop rose especially gully boy propelled it like this things you can track yeah. so easily and then right now like uh, i think there's a rise in pop and uh, like mm-hmm. you know like with singers like akasha and like all these pop artists are, and arman malik who is amazing yeah. so like they're all <laughs> like making shout out arman i don't know i know i know you're not here but some day if you watch this <laughs> maybe some day you'll watch us yeah you'll send him the link you'll be like watch it so yeah <laughs> but no like so pop artists like for example music are making a comeback slowly and then now k pop is sort of like been like hey india like i exist i was here i'm here so this is like these are like trends that exist within like let's say the bracket of uh, the music content sphere so then over yeah. there like you will have to uh, sort of plan your stories with your team accordingly so like that's what we do like we do our like for me i handle mostly now the kpop stuff because like that's where i've honed my skills so i can yes. do other things of course but like like they usually like because the demand for kpop has increased so much like i handle it completely so like if there's like a trend that my colleague who handles indian metal has noticed he's going to take that up he's going to pitch that and be like i've noticed this 
should I write about it? Then we decide to uh, are the right people to interview for this particular story. Like same way, like I have a story coming out like pretty soon, like maybe next week. So again, like okay. I interview people in Korea for it, and like you know, like because people who I felt would be able to uh, who have a good gauge and experience about a particular trend that they can then you know like uh, give you their knowledge about that and like you know sort of give you some guidance. So that's why like we do court interviews and stuff like the like the story I did yesterday about the viral video for like the BTS the one with the yeah. Chunari Chunari like I had to speak to the creators so that I could get an understanding of how they build something like that. So the whatever you write about like it's a lot of research like so you can write about food you can write about whatever. But it's about research and keeping up to date on social media and what the general public is raving about. For example, if you're mm-hmm. a food blogger, you probably want to do content around dalgona coffee like a couple of months ago. Like yeah. that was all the rage, and like you can even do a piece that critiques it. You know, like it's like what the hell yeah. is dalgona coffee, please? Or you can be like, I'm gonna try it today and make a YouTube video about it. Like, so you have to be able to write the trends that fall within your interests and sort of expand on that. If that right. makes, yeah, because the question was very general, so I hope it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. I hope that sort of helps. Okay, the next one is from Palav Joshi, who wants Hi. to know an artist. That's is that your cool. friend? Yeah, yeah. She is. She. Okay, great. For so your friend who wants. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic! Okay, yeah. so Palak Joshi from Rolling Stone <laughs> wants to know an artist you enjoyed interviewing. All interviews are fun, but the most memorable one. Oh, I love this. Uh, this is like one of my favorite questions <laughs> to get because it keeps changing. But uh, oh, yeah, because ah. that's who you talk to. Right? <laughs> but right. I think uh, 80s always fun. Every time I speak to them, oh my god, like they they're like puppies. Like they like just yeah. you know, like jump around you and they're so full of energy yeah. and life. So eighties, <laughs> every time I meet them, it's wonderful. And uh, I think like artists like Holland and uh, mm-hmm. James Lee, like these are yeah. two of my most emotional interviews uh, because they're also like friends of mine now. So it's like after you sort of like do the initial interview and then you meet and then you talk more over instagram dm messaging phone whatever over time you speak um you know it's like it's you develop a bond in that sense which is like you know okay like which makes that experience so much better of the interview itself so i think like emotionally those were the most uh, those are the most the interview that i have most emotional investment in yeah yeah But like yeah. again, memorable of course in terms of the impact it made was the conversation with Eighty. RM. Yeah, RM. Oh, like that was like for me also like a defining moment in my career, where it yeah. was uh, you know like okay like this solidifies that I want to do this for the rest of my life because everything yeah. made sense. Everything like clicked in suddenly after I spoke to him, like it just, <laughs> like it sort of put everything into perspective, you know. So someone's asking if I've interviewed EXO. Yeah. Not as a whole yet, but I have interviewed Lay. Go see it on my website. Give us the clicks. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah. please let's get EXO. Yeah. But you know, like hearing you talk about this, it's just. Do you ever have a moment where you're like, oh my god, I'm actually like interviewing RM, or like, oh my god, I'm actually friends with Holland. Like this is actually my <laughs> life. Do you ever have those moments? Like. What did I do to deserve this? Thank you so much, God. I know that I have worked hard to deserve it. Never be like, yes. "What did I do to deserve this?" If you worked yeah, for it, maybe absolutely. you have earned it. So, girl, you too. Like, you score your dream conversation or your dream interview. You pat yourself on the back. You be like, "I worked for it." Yeah, you yes. thank God. You thank your parents, and you thank whoever supported you in your life. But most importantly, thank yourself because you worked right. to that point to make it happen. Because a lot of people, I I don't like it when people tell me you're so lucky, you're so you're oh how wonderful that you're just you know like like just meeting these K-pop stars and I'm like it is wonderful, but it's not like something that just fell into my lap. It's something yes. that I worked very very hard to have to make happen because um, there were there's a lot of like opposing factors like whether it's you know the distance being based in India like like there's a whole 
thing that exists with the Korean labels versus India and their whole perception of it. Mm-hmm. So getting interviews isn't like a piece of cake, right? So, like, it is. Plus, I think India in general, like, the viewpoint on K-pop. If you say I write about K-pop, sometimes there'll be people outside of the industry who'll just be like, "What's that?" You know, and then you have to just hold your head high and walk away from that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going at it because, like, a lot of the times yeah. you won't believe like how many emails I sent to like the same companies, the same artists, and you just get. either no response at all which is the worst thing they won't yeah so they won't even reply to you or they will just patiently keep saying no we're not looking to uh, do a, do a content for india at this point of time that happened literally last week like it keeps happening so you have to uh. swallow that pill next day email them again email them again don't leave them <laughs> keep going for it and it is so it sometimes pushes you and like into this wreck of emotions because you feel like like i mean maybe i think like palak can tell you or like so many of my friends like madhu like who was like she's a fuse filled to copyright so i think like she's one of my best friends so these are all people who are sort of familiar with kpop and also know who know the other side of what's going on with me and how many times right. i've broken down just sobbing because i'm i'm seeing like white kpop journalists get the same opportunities that i will never get or at least not yet right. you know like mm-hmm. like there'll be like a label this one label that's super notorious for this where they'll just like want to they'll dismiss you know like uh, any like approaching any interviews like whatever or whatever requests that come from india and my other journalist friends who are indian or of color people of color have experienced this where the validation of being a white person is more important like yeah. the white person doing the interview is more important than the content or quality of the right. writing so that i think like right. happen like i think like with many many companies many whatever that is very yeah. disheartening because you work so hard yeah. and you like sacrifice so much of your time your effort whatever whatever and it like just like you get dismissed based purely on your skin color your name mm-hmm. or the india on rolling stone because they'll want the rolling stone us but if yeah. you say you're rolling stone india sometimes there'll be a barrier in the name of the company itself and we are proud to be rolling stone india so you don't want to be with on, on yeah. an application by like okay it's fine yeah. i'll ask you again whenever you release an album because it's my job to ask you but uh, i don't i now now over time i've like decided like it's not something that i should beat myself up over because i used to think it was a problem on my end and like if you guys uh. also get into this industry it's going to be damn tough you have a lot of days where you will blame yourself where you will think that you you have you know you have shortcomings in some way like that like you see other journalists from around the world getting interviews or whatever but think about the fact that like they, they the privilege that they come from the companies that they work for like are they people of color are they not so all of these things play into it because uh, like it's not about you like a lot of the time like it's right. more the larger picture it's about your country it's about whatever but it's not about you as a person so like it took the like the past two or three years for me to like understand that it still is like stings right i'm But, sure uh, yeah it's human yeah, nature you yeah. I mean, it never goes away. That like sinking feeling, so it never goes away. Where like you know, like you know, you are being told no when your mm. peers in other countries are getting the opportunities to meet these artists and speak to these artists and film content with these artists, but you are not. It's quite disappointing. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you you do your best, and then you hope that tomorrow you can film that video or like do that interview. Like, and that's happened where like an artist has been dismissed before. And then, like a year later, they only approached me into it. Like you won't believe, like stuff like this. I must feel like vindication. Vindication! Oh my god! Like yes. <laughs> like I was like, I knew you'd come. So India's a big market. Take it seriously. You don't even know. Like you don't even know. Like babies are powerful. Okay, don't you dare mess with yeah. me. Yeah. That's my thing. I'm like one day when America is stagnated, they will come here. <laughs> That, that yeah, happens. absolutely. Yeah, so because we are such a massive, it's market. just a matter of when. Mm. Yes. Yeah. A timing, timing, timing. All timing. Yeah. yeah. 
you know now we've spoken about like rolling stone india just that as a label but i feel like just by virtue of being women we get like a lot more slander for liking the things that we like and doing the things that we do so i'm curious to know if you've like found yourself working twice as hard just to be taken seriously absolutely every single day yeah. every single day my male peers um like even on twitter and social media you'll see there's a bias and this is like biases like fans and companies create because it's like you know like a lot of like this happens like if let's say a male journalist or celebrity tweets about bts they'll get a yeah. lot more bow than if a female journalist does it it's a fascinating pattern it's a, like their follow count jumps their retweets all that happens and it's because for some reason the validation from men is valued more yeah which is just a age old and i feel like we've seen this like throughout history yes, with the beatles it. and with like every boy group imaginable we've seen this throughout history yes. the second you get like male attention it's yeah you've made it right but like, oh if men validate it's the like same with the beatles man like like in the beginning the beatles fans were women it was the same thing yeah. like right now people talk like complete shit about bts but i'm like if you look back at reviews and such uh like someone had done this on twitter which was an amazing thread yeah. they had if i can find it i'll dm it to you but they had yeah. compiled all the uh, male journalists or whatever who were doing reviews about the beatles in 19 in the 1960s when they first came to america and then yeah. they also put in modern like like reviews of bts that male journalists are like writing about today and they be like what is who is what like which one is bts which one is yeah. bts and everyone was like oh because it was so similar and it was so yeah. dismissed and then once like the beatles started getting more famous and became a trend from a trend it became a staple from a staple it became like a necessity a point of validation and like the ultimate like you know like level of music the, they set the bar for music and pop music yeah and for some reason all the female fans who had given him given them the elevation in the beginning were dismissed and labeled as crazy but like as soon as right. the male fans are coming in it added a legitimization to the, Be- the beatles what is that right like i yeah. think that is ridiculous and like this is true of things like anime this is true of things like star trek absolutely. and like yeah, it's like absolutely. some things that have existed throughout in fandom yeah. culture it's become it's like tropes culture. almost in like internet like pop culture it's become like oh a gamer girl oh a girl is into star wars listen we've been here we've been we've here, we've been here. We've, we've been here since yeah. one honey like you don't even know like you found out about this because your bro was like hey bro like you go to the video <laughs> like i mean this way and then yeah. you kind of hijack it it's like and then like it becomes a point of validation because the male has said so and i'm like <laughs> right and this happens like, i'm sure it's happened to you i'm sure it's ha- like it's happened to so many other women like in our lives today right where it's right. like your opinion or your pitch or your uh, idea was sort of shoved aside for to make space for a man okay so yeah so like i'm very glad that that's so it, disheartening it is very disheartening but i'm very glad that uh, like certain publications and like companies and all are taking a bit are making a bit more of an effort to be more inclusive and i'm lucky that rolling stone india is mostly women yeah people don't oh, know that amazing yeah women majority 80% to 20% women so like women is the main Yeah. So that's very nice. That's fine. Yeah. Work for companies that have a lot of women. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, I mean, okay. I think no. Yeah, absolutely. It's just internalized at this point. You really have to like break all of the habits and unlearn really tough habits just to kind of reform the society. It's tough. It's not easy, it's but tough. it's required. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this qu- next question is from Urja wants to know what's the most we've sort of spoken about this already but just to get into it a little bit more specifically what's okay. the most challenging part of your experience were the idols comfortable to talk with non korean journalists and how real did you feel their answers 
Okay, this is a good variation of the question. Hang on, I'm just plugging my yeah. phone in because my battery gonna die. But yeah, no, I'll I'll, I'll take it <laughs> with me and I shall answer this. Okay, so yep. this is a really good, good question because, um, like I said, a lot of what the artists say. It's my dad's room, so I don't know where the plug points are. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I found one. So a lot of the time, what artists say, especially K-pop artists, like we know that the experience is curated for us. Like when you're yes. part of like um, like this industry as a fan or as an artist, you know that the K-pop experience is curated for you. So you have to keep in mind that you might not, if you're meeting or speaking to one of the bigger artists, you might not get the most honest answer. You might, you might not. Especially yeah. if it is a Q and A sent over email, it is very likely that it was the PR team who wrote this and sent it to you. Like, yeah, it's very likely, and yeah. you can tell because, like, like my journalist friends and I, like, I don't, I hope they don't think we're dumb because we compare notes, we compare interviews, we know, like, if you sent us the same, sent me another friend the same answer, I know what you did. I used to work in PR too, honey. So yeah, <laughs> it gets difficult. And like I said, like artists will watch themselves, right? Like really carefully around you, which is nice though because they're very, very polite. I, I, it's such a strange space because you want them to be able to be themselves, but at the same time, like right. to, to be a K-pop idol, is you know what you signed on for when you took on this job, yeah. and it's such a difficult job, and you have to because a K-pop idol, I think the term itself is. Like to represent the Korean culture, like plays a big part in it. So yeah. Korean like K-pop idols are like an all-round idol, where uh, is great in music and performance, but also what is great about culture in Korea. Oh, sorry, let me pause. So a lot of people, their first experience with Korea will be through K-pop. So K-pop idols have to really monitor themselves, you know. So when you yes. meet them, it is like especially a group. It is very likely that they are so they are so aware of like how they're standing, how they're speaking to you, their facial expressions. Everything is like super uh, like they are conscious about. Like even when I met Z-pop Dream, because they yeah. have been trained by the Korean system. Like even the guys in the group, for example, and this is something we all notice about male K-pop stars. They won't touch you. They won't touch you. Yeah. Like if you t- pose okay. with them and you take a photo, I kind of appreciate that actually. Like I've had like so many times where not 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 artists, but like you know, like if you're in a group picture, men are terrible. So like uh, this is so nice where like K-pop star will make sure their hands are like always visible in the picture. It's such a gentlemanly thing to do. They'll make sure they're not touching you. They're not making contact with your skin because, like, suppose I'm okay with a hug, but like maybe um, you know, like my friend isn't okay with a hug from a man she doesn't know personally. Like yeah. they're sensitive about that, and that's appreciated. Or maybe yeah. your religion doesn't yeah. allow it sometimes. You know, so they're aware of all these things. So you also, when you meet a K-pop star, it's not like you can go run at them and give them a hug. No. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, like especially if you're a journalist, like if it's a fan meeting or something, or like you know how VAV pull people up on stage and like they, like hugs hey. and whatever. That's all like part of the experience. Like it's again like a yeah. show, but if you are meeting an artist for a conversation or for an interview or something like that, there's no way I can just run at G Dragon and tackle hug him as much as I want to hug this hell out of him. As much as you want to, yeah. <laughs> I want to hug him so bad. Like there's no way that that would be my first move. No. Uh, okay. it is, it's very formal where you have to walk in, you have to bow, you have to say Anya Haseo and like, you know, like, just mm-hmm. like, keep your hands, like, you know, you shake your hands in a certain way and everything. Right. So, and then like, everyone does introductions, sometimes you exchange cards, business card culture is big in Korea. Yeah. So there's all of these and then you sit, where it's very formal, like even the way you sit, the way you cross your legs. It's pretty cool. I like it. I think uh, it's like. I like, I'm a very professional person, so I like professional stuff. Some people may not, but uh, I'm a professional. I just, I'm like, yes. So at the end of the interview, you can always, like, once you get your quotes, once you have your information, you can be like, can I have a hug? Or can I have a picture? 
like just ask politely like you know just say me i or always ask permission yeah. don't just pull the camera out because the management can angry at you you might be not allowed to see the artist again so ask okay. permission from the artist yeah. and the management that's just good and, practice yeah. in general like in general, even if you're not yeah even if you're not going with a professional purpose it's just good yeah. practice it's just nice to always ask people for Yeah. they really appreciate it like even if i'm just i'm sure like, yeah and meeting like an artist like if i'm just like suppose i don't know like prab deep walks past me like you're like whatever and i'll be like i won't just be like hey prab and like you know hey selfie <laughs> like it'll be like prab prab can i have a picture with you and like in, this is what i did and he really appreciated that i asked him thank you and that was like i was like oh okay like you know that was like the artist made a point to say that that means the shit must yeah. happen to them all the time where like you know they just right. like without their permission the image is captured and i know it's part of being a celebrity but if you ask them they'll remember you they'll appreciate you so do that yeah okay but like you know just now that you've brought up z project and all as well It's not uncommon to see non-Koreans in K-pop groups, and like even though it may be scandalous sometimes, it's not uncommon to see it now. There's Sorry, a lot of I groups that are majority. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you hear me now? Will you repeat? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can. Really okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I mean, it's very common to see non-Koreans now in K-pop groups, mm-hmm. right? Like even. it it can be scandalous sometimes with you know solo maybe or non korean idols mm-hmm. but now that we have z project the z pop dream and now that we've seen the sort of success that it has had what do you in like your professional opinion feel about the future of kpop in india but also like india in kpop sort of if it makes sense mm. to you yeah i i get what you mean um <sighs> Very complicated. This is a lot of question because again, <laughs> Z-pop dream succeeded because it did not market itself as K-pop. As K-pop, right? Yeah, that's why it succeeded because I think now, like it's, I think people like the idea of applying the K-pop formula to artists from other countries and seeing how that mm-hmm. turns out. and this we've seen in countries like brazil as well you know like it's very interesting you've had the same like apply the formula but they sing in the local language or they sing in english because if it becomes about like i think we had our own indian girl kpop group debut right recently. right uh, there was a lot of like opinions shared on the internet about that yeah and it's like i yeah. think Yeah, I think like what happens is like K-pop has built a built a certain standard of artistry, and if you can't yeah. match that, the fans will be merciless. So right. that's why I feel like if you are gonna call yourself a K-pop artist or be called a K-pop artist, do the hard work and the training. I think like that mm-hmm. would be like you know like I think personally, in my opinion, I feel like. nationality shouldn't really be a thing but i there's like a lot of korean friends of mine who have spoken to us to feel like nationality isn't a thing but it's more about the effort and the training that goes into it because kpop stars right. the level they're at like is absolutely crazy. yeah 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 like that's not to say that you can't like sing or dance kpop sure you can please like do yeah. your like like write a kpop song sure do it but i think like to consider seriously consider yourself a part of the industry you have to be aware of what the industry is at what level they are and then what level you are if you genuinely feel you match that level go ahead but like as yeah. at this point i would feel like no matter which country you're from i would say like doing going through the kpop training system would be the way to become a k-pop star like whether you're indian or whether you're american or whatever like go through the training yeah. system go to korea and like audition do this sort of thing i feel it will just help you improve and help you hit the standard and meet yeah. your dreams if you want to do that but i feel like if you want to be a k-pop star in india why does it have to be korean like that was something that i thought about a lot you know where i was like and yeah. something that like, that our team also talks about where people like 
wouldn't it be amazing if we applied the K-pop formula to a band in India who sings in an Indian language or in English? Right. Right? So we thought that should be fun because that's what's happened in many countries which have been successful. So I think like uh, that should be like an interesting. You can market it as like the K-pop, uh, you know, like training system, the K-pop like way of performing applied to Indians. How does that work? And I feel like a lot the market for that will be massive. Right, yeah. Suggest you uh, try and do like the training systems that they do. Like, and I'm not saying this in any malicious way. I just mean like, I think that it would, if you want to meet your dream yeah. of becoming a legit K-pop. Yeah. Yeah. Pop stars are also trained, so that's why they're the level that they are. At. I saw Z Pop Dream live. Oh my God! Like that level of performance yeah. is is just like as good as like you know seeing any other group. Like when I I've been to a lot of concerts and like Z Boys. Oh my God! Processor, yeah, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's totally possible. Also, though, uh, it to also again not about about you sometimes. So don't be down. Yeah. You know, if you don't make it through the round, sometimes, like a lot of things, like you being Indian or you yeah. looking a certain way. You've seen like artists who are maybe like there was in Rania there was a member who was half black and half Korean, and she was discriminated against a right. lot. But that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. I hope things have changed. But this does exist in the industry. Not all companies, but it exists. So if this experience like um, you face, don't be disheartened because you're not alone at that. Like if you go and audition and if you don't get through, like. Don't worry. Like work hard, audition again, and sometimes it's really not your fault. Yeah. I think that's true. No matter like what you choose to pursue in life, you won't always make it through the first time. Your plan A might not always be the plan that finally ends up working yeah. out. You know, and if you went. And it's it's human nature actually to want to give up at that point and be like, oh, I will never do this again. Oh, I give up. I will never try doing this again. But you know. If you really, really want to succeed at it, you have to try again and again and again. It won't work out for maybe the first fifteen times, first thirty times, but then maybe it will. Who knows? Yeah, like you so, never know because, like Priyanka was telling me, like how much she had to try multiple times, like several auditions, several companies until like you know Z Pop right. Dream happened and everything. So like it was, I mean, like plus she had to go to Korea, she had to. Win like at the contest, K-pop contest. Yeah. And even then, it's not like a Korean company just snapped her up. Like despite winning, yeah. it, right? Because there is, like it or not, like racism that still exists in many fields, no matter which job it is or whatever. Like yeah. racism is very real, and that's something that any artist of color, like especially Indians, we will have to face it. People who come to India also face it. So it's just right. like, such a daily Absolutely. battle, I think, and uh, yes. don't beat yourself up about it because, like I said, yes. there are a lot of factors you cannot control. All you can do is just keep trying, like multiple, multiple times. That's the only way, and maybe one company Absolutely. will be able to see beyond your skin color. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, the next one is from uh, Sayantika Biswas, who wants to know uh, at present. How ready do you think India is to welcome a K-pop band? And because of COVID nineteen, I still 
feel like uh, bigger bands like BTS, EXO level is very difficult. Very difficult to handle yeah. at this point of time. I still think there is a lot of time before we can get to that level. Uh, definitely artists like ATs, One Us, these are super doable. They're super, super possible. Um, but again, like, and I've talked about this, like, in other interviews I've done, columns that I've done, the planning needs to be, like, on point. The, you know, like, because a lot of Indian fans will need time. They will need time to save money, plan travel. Our country is massive and fans are young. So that's something that from both ends, whether it's the organizer here or like international like organizer and the artist team, all of these like factors, all these different people need to be um, in sync to understand not only the oh sorry not not only the Indian audience and like the how we purchase tickets. Network is a bit bad. Yeah. So like I think like from the K pop side and the Indian side you can understand a little bit better because I think Indian um, concert organizers and all don't understand the uh, like production that K pop requires, even if it's a small band, quote unquote. Like yeah. even like yeah. a lesser known band or rookie will have massive yeah. production because that's just the standard yeah. in Korea. Yeah. So like yeah. uh, that, that Indians also need to will need to have an understanding yeah. of, and then shell out. Oh, there's a volume thing on my end. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. There's no sound. Can you guys hear now? Hang on, let me see. I think it's because of the network issue, perhaps. Yeah, it might be because of the network. You can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can anyone yeah, like can comment and let me know if the sound is working? Yeah, let us know. Like, can you hear us? It's oh, fine okay. now. Okay. Okay. Great. Might have been the network. This area is yeah. Ah. Good sound. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. So like, I think uh, the Indian side, like, they'll be like, "Chota band hai, to zyada paisa nahi dena hai," you know. And I'm like, that's not how it works, honey. Like, even if it it's does, a, yeah. yeah, like. A band I spoke to, it was like I won't tell you which one, but everybody knows them. Everybody loves them. Yeah. And we were all talking about like, see, can we bring this band here? And it was artist fee was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Artist. Oh my god. Yeah. But that is. But like, it's completely valid and that's acceptable. Yeah. That's that, and they will give you the cost, the breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. Like of like yeah. this is you know for. The technology, the costumes, all of this—the stylist, the managers, all of yeah. that—you know, like all of that stuff—and that is like sometimes included in the artist fee, sometimes not. So then you also have to pay for things like the airline tickets. You have to pay for when they come here, the boarding, the food, the ground transport, booking, the venue. Yeah. They are paying for that. You are paying for that, like your sponsors, and they, like even if it's like a oh hi Kiwa. Kiva will also Hi, Kiva. Oh my God, that's amazing. really good input on this. Great timing, Kiva. You guys are here. Yeah. Because <laughs> they will be able to tell you like the amount of money I'm and sure. investment that even they had to do. Like I know the kind of, like for VAV, what went in, right? The blood, sweat, yeah. tears that went in. for. The I was there and, and like you could see the hard work that went into it. Yes. Even into it, yeah. like <laughs> speaking of, yeah. like even when into it and Alexa had come, the kind of like yeah. uh, because I was much more part of like you know like uh, organizing it and helping uh, Namaste with that. So like, yeah, and it was because uh, into it were doing our projects and Alexa was also doing our projects with Rolling Stone at the time. So we were also helping out, you know, and oh my god, like like the planning, the cost everything like because it's not just like let's say like the like the members of like VAV like the six members of VAV you're not just paying for them you're yeah. paying for everyone who accompanies them like the managers right. the stylists right. the, all they'll bring their own tech through because it's also it's like you said K-pop is an experience so yes. most of these performances are going to be very like you know Absolutely. performance 
it's standard right like uh, like people keep asking me is bts going to come is bts going to come and i'm like not now not now because yeah. can we do them justice ask yourself that. exactly if they exactly. come here can we give them what they deserve i don't think so it's not going to be on like not not because we don't care or we are bad fans that doesn't exist you're a good fan okay right but like more about <laughs> are there enough of us uh our country the cost and production all that stuff works very differently than like a us and europe our income system works very differently our currency is much lower than korea's and the us's or europe's mm-hmm. so like everything is a little bit more difficult a little bit more expensive and like even working adults like us it's difficult to scrounge together enough money for a ticket like when i went to see bts in thailand last year I mean I didn't have enough money to buy my own ticket my friends bought it for me and I paid them back I don't make enough money for that ticket it was like $450 I don't have enough money for that ticket but yeah. and the airline ticket and you know like stay Exactly yeah yeah so like it's a lot and like so then when I tell K-pop companies that when you can't charge $400 for a ticket here in India they'll be like what and I'm like you can charge that for VIP but for GA you can't yeah like general access you can't do that because like uh, it's just not feasible for our current economic state and this is, it is. something that it takes a while for the uh, companies also to absorb for them to understand um so like that's why like when you say oh i want bts to come there's so many things uh, going on like <laughs> behind the scenes that uh, you <laughs> don't you don't know that like you know like i mm-hmm. have been speaking to big hit about i've been speaking to like different organizers sponsors were interested in paying for bts to come here and not necessarily it's not right. a big event it that it could be like a company that's like oh let's bring bts and i like you know they'll call me and they'll be like oh uh, what are the logistics involved and i'll give it to them they'll be like oh <laughs> and then we've had like companies that will like be able to afford all of that to be able to afford yeah. any of bts but where is your profit let's say you book exactly. like a massive stadium in mumbai and we know the one the stadium you book right. the stadium that itself i think there's like a fee of like that goes into crores i don't know i have no idea i'm not, i'm sure yeah. i think to book that stadium it is something like a uh, 2 crore more i don't know like yikes i i have no idea but like it goes to crores that much i know so if you want to book it for a concert booking it empty and then bringing in all the tech stuff adding like the production usually if it's an artist like a katy perry like katy perry brought her own like stuff like her own you yeah. know like uh, props costumes dancers in in like in dozens like in dozens and like this giant statue thing like equipment like instruments the band will bring like bts out of the band like i mean come on so like you know all of this stuff needs to be paid for by somebody so the cost Absolutely. just keep increasing to a point where you're like okay if i could pay for all this but how will i make money out of this experience right. the sponsor yeah so then it's hard to even pay. make even with such groups right cuz like there's only so yeah. much you can charge on the ticket there was this like yeah. big scandal that happened with like the Justin Bieber ticket pricing right there's yeah. no way you can ask for that much money from an indian audience it's just not going to be feasible at all I because mean, even you have also understand that most of the audience yeah. is like underage and will have to ask for money exactly like even though justin yeah. bieber's concert it uh, i think 60000 people attended it was yeah. it was meaning the tickets sold out but at the same time they had to that was lowered prices for india just imagine those were lowered prices so yeah. you know um when that happens like a lot of the time uh there is no profit margin at all because you know you have to lower your profit you know you won't make a full like you won't make any revenue from this and that's what right. i think like uh, like that's the pill sponsors whether like like kiwa is saying right like not only sponsors from korean companies in india we need collab right. indian performers to gain audiences so much involved like, i'll come to that too so like whether it's indian sponsors korean foreign whatever they need to swallow the pill that you might not make money out of this there's no profit like for the artist will get the profit like you will have to pay bts if they come here honey 
you have yes. to pay them but what who is paying the sponsor back who paid dts right right yeah so like the sponsor who like for example if kiwa books vav how will kiwa earn that money back is the audience ready to make that happen for them like and i'm just talking about vav i'm not even talking about bts here you know what i mean so it's right, like yeah. Uh, yeah like it's it's very very difficult i think like they'll be able to see tickets cannot help just cannot cover the logistics and performance fee forget profits exactly yeah. and this is someone in the industry kiwa has done shows they know what they're yeah. talking about yeah exactly. so like it's very difficult to imagine if it was like that for the slightly smaller artists like mm-hmm. just think about like a bts level like i mean it would have to be a sponsor doing it out of the kindness of uh, their heart like honestly yeah. what that happened with justin b was like, the guy who did it he did it because expect. he said i yeah. was ready for it he didn't he, he okay. made i think it was a 2 million dollar loss according reportedly according to rumor okay. it was a 2 million dollar loss but he said like he was able to front it because he he could bear the cost but he had said he wanted to do the concert anyway because he wanted to um, create the uh, culture of big artists hey. he did it big artists have been coming since then and i'm grateful that he did that even you two when they came like recently they lowered their ticket prices for india which they didn't do for any other country hey. they did for india because they also like were like okay let's 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 not focus that much on the profit let's focus on uh, like at least bringing like the music yeah. to this particular country that doesn't get the opportunity so mm-hmm. yeah so it's like it has to be like until unless we earn at the same level that american and european like citizens do we cannot uh, provide that much of a profit as you know all these companies and all require to set up things yeah yeah Okay this has been a nice long almost 2 hour yes. conversation with you oh my god i didn't even realize because it's been so it's been nice it's been so fun yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's been fun it's been so eye opening and like i feel like all of us i'm sure got to know a lot more about what it takes to actually put together an interview and an article at a publication like rolling stone india which i'm sure nobody really knows about like nobody knows what goes on behind the scenes we only see the yeah. art and we're like wow i wish i had rithi's life but there's a lot more work that rithi is doing more. behind the scenes just to make that happen totally. blood sweat tears yeah. arguments pain there's like <laughs> a lot there's like sometimes you want to yeah. throttle certain companies but you got to you know keep keep on trucking you got to do that so yeah, yeah. so I just as we like wrap up yes oh, yes yeah. Absolutely. Someone was saying, "Who are the kindest idols you have met?" So far, everybody has been lovely. Let me assure you that uh, everybody has been absolutely wonderful. So, so far, so good. Even the <laughs> let's, part yeah, let's keep hoping for that. Yeah. So pray for me okay. that it continues, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. Because it's it's nice to see you like out there promoting Indian culture just as much as you're promoting Korean culture to us. And Thank I you. feel like. that's why i kept bringing up the 80s video because that meant a lot to me as i'm sure it did to like so many other not just yeah. 80s years but like k-pop fans in india in general because you see you know your idols sort of appreciating indian culture and it yes. feels nice i'm learning so that's why it's like uh, like because they also had questions about india they had questions about uh, like especially 80s like this is like 80s a lot of the uh, r&b hip hop artists as well questions like what do you listen to uh what movie should we watch uh what kind of food should we try when if we if and when we come like how popular is maybe this western artist then they gauge their own fame you know like in comparison uh, <laughs> but like is this wrong to say is this right do you do namaste like this so as soon as this conversation so nice. starts yeah you open yeah. that uh door to like do the back and forth where even you learn from them and they learn from you so you kind of yes. like you know help maybe even improve situations like cultural appropriation or you can shut it down you can prevent it like this is how this is how alexa beautifully navigated paying tribute to india without culturally appropriating it you know right. because yeah. she educated she and uh, her team educated themselves yeah. perfectly about india constantly were calling me were calling like various other uh, like you know like people in the indian music industry and kpop scene to double check yeah. are we doing this correctly 
and i think that is incredible aomg has done this where they'll double check before yeah. they you know like like talk about something okay. whatever so i think it's like you said so important for it to be both ways yeah mm-hmm. yeah so we appreciate that so much and just as we wrap up it's been like almost 2 hours yeah so as we wrap up if you have any like ending comments any like passing advice for people who want to sort of follow your path kind of maybe are trying to figure out what they want to do anything you want to say to them first of all i want to thank you so much for having me on this was so fun i really enjoyed it just felt like <laughs> us chatting the best thing ever right yeah. and yeah like the best the best <laughs> and um, <laughs> i i am so thankful to everyone who joined in thank you for you know like uh, taking the time out of your day to come and like watch us speak and talk about kpop and korea um but yeah like in terms of advice i would just say like keep going don't give up and another piece of advice somebody gave me which i think is really important is like and so is tushar apte and he wrote the song home for bts okay so please like this is the, some of the best advice about my life just show up no matter what it is like occasion wise or if you have an opportunity to do an interview show up and do it like don't turn yeah. it down because the doors that will open is beyond your imagine like literally i've said yes to project i thought was ah, whatever but i've said yes and that led to me meeting some incredible people artists connections like it was mad like i'll give you an example one friend of mine called me up and said do you want to come with me for a got seven show while i was in seoul that's why i met jp oh he called me up last oh my minute God. i was sleeping in bed and he literally oh called God. and he said like do you want to come with me and i was like then up because i'd already seen got seven so i was like uh but then i was like don't be don't act spoiled be grateful that your friend has asked this get up get ready and go like the concert was going to yeah. begin in an hour but i just got got the hell out of there and i showed up and then i got to meet jb because of that so oh my god show up amazing go for everything yeah. do it and don't be discouraged like hey whatever people say you know like they'll be like okay oh, pop that's like whatever like they'll say things like that's mm-hmm. okay that's whatever don't let it yep. affect you like i said your relationship with a, with an artist is between you and the artist nobody else so keep positive and keep working really really hard don't give up great that's such a wonderful message to end it on i just want to quickly thank everyone for joining us and sending all of these wonderful questions i couldn't get through half of these even though we've been talking for so long I so know. hopefully we get to do this again yes um It would be really nice to like actually sit down and have a conversation once the you know restrictions are a lot more relaxed. Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Absolutely. Yes. So thank you for having me. Please also thank Absolutely. your team from me. Uh, it yes. was really an Absolutely. honor to always an honor to work with KCCI. I think like we worked on many projects together, so it's like been yes. lovely every time we yes. work. So thank you for thinking of me for this and having me on. You're yeah. wonderful. I really enjoyed talking to you. I really enjoy talking to you too. Let's keep doing this, and yes. yeah, hopefully we get to do this again one more time. If anyone has like any recommendations on who we should have next on influencing the culture, you can feel free to DM us, and we will try our best to get them on. Well, yeah, that was it for episode one. Thank you so much for joining us. This was way more fun than I would have ever expected it to be. So thank you guys. Hey, thanks everyone. Thanks, Sabha. <laughs> thank Please you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Yeah. Okay. Take See you guys later. Bye. Bye.